Hey everybody. It's me, I think. I think I'm here. I think I've touched down. And I think that means that I'm ready to play the video game. I think we still do that here. We play the video game. Hooch. An even 60, huh? Wow. It's good to see you this morning. I hope you're hyped for this game like I am hyped for this game. The demo was really, really good. Uh, how you doing, Hooch? Thanks for the, the prime. Preesh. Super preesh. Um, you have no idea? You have no idea? Oh my god. Yo. If that's true... Hooch. Like, get ready for the next big one. Get ready for the next big one, for real. Like, um... This is the, uh... It's Atlas. It's, um... It's Persona. It's, it's their new IP. Um... It is... Basically the Persona formula. But, uh... I would say more classic fantasy? No. I don't think it's in the Shin Megami Tensei universe. At least I don't think so. Um, it's brand new. Uh, I'll hop over here to the... You'll see how much drip the game has immediately. Um, this game... I've been waiting for this game for a long time, and when the demo came out, Hooch, you should... At the very least, you should play the demo, because the, the demo is obviously free. I played for eight hours in the demo. They give you a huge amount of content in the demo. And your progress from the demo carries over to the main game. When you purchase it. So, you should really give it a shot. It's awesome, I think. Very impressed by the demo, like I said. The game, you know, Persona 5 and even Persona 4 before it had a lot of style, right? A lot of really really great style choices this game they put style and flair it feels like on every single thing that they could it's really crazy to me um how much flash is in this game but they also kind of um made what i would say are quality of life changes to some of what makes up the persona formula <clears throat> This is still pretty early, of course, but... In short, I liked what I saw. I feel like I'm gonna ramble. Attempt to make it... Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, the UI in this game, specifically, is ridiculous. It is top to bottom ridiculous. Um, I'm actually gonna turn the volume up a little bit, because this game, I feel like... In, in total, is a little quieter than most games. I should have a compressor active right now. So, a side chain action. Let's put it like right there. Uh, you all can tell me if that's a little too much. A lot of style praise for Persona? Yeah, absolutely. And for good reason. Um, so here's the thing. Even though I did play the demo, did my move start yet? No, uh, I move uh, the first of the month, which is why you see when I have the full cam active, there's so many tubs back here. Uh, first of the month, I'm I'm heading to the new spot. Preach. Yeah, I'm still having to kind of uh, make sure some things fall into place to to do stuff the way I want to do it. Uh, but I feel I feel good about the new place for sure. Moving is such a pain. Yeah, I've done it too much. When I got to this place, I thought I'd be here for. Uh, several years, honestly, and it just didn't work out that way, uh, for reasons that are not my fault, uh, I won't get into it, but yeah, basically, the new place I think is just going to be way, way nicer. Um, okay, so like I was saying, even though I did play the demo, I am not going to load that file. I think I'm going to start a fresh game kind of knowing what I know from the demo. Uh, I'm also going to start a game on hard mode. 
was playing on normal for the demo. I will say this, if you don't pay attention, even on normal, you will get bodied. Uh, and yeah, Hooch, especially if you don't know anything about it, it, it's worth starting the new game, I think, for sure. So let's do new game. Who's there? I can feel you watching me from a place beyond my sight. You should, Hooch. Yeah. Uh, like I said, at the very least, play the demo. It's on Steam. It's on. It's on everything. I think. I don't know if it's on Switch necessarily. Uh, maybe it is. Whoever you are, please. But you can play it on whatever. Does our world pique your interest? Pardon my curiosity, but would you tell me your name? That is to say, tell me who you really are. The one who meets my eyes across a strange threshold. It is, yeah. Yeah, I'm playing it on Steam right now. Yeah. So, the thing that the game asks you is they say, hey, who are you? Not, not who is the protagonist, but who shall guide the protagonist. Right? Pretty interesting. Ah, a most unusual name. One I've never heard in our world. Which suggests to me you might reside in a world beyond ours. You know, the game is called Metaphor. And they get meta really fast. I'll say that. They get meta quick, but I'm, I'm really intrigued to see where they go with it. It is a curious thing that in your eyes... It's not meta in a way that I find as way. It's, it's kind of actually... Untold. I, I want to see what they're cooking. Or to put it another way... Earthbound this style. This is yeah. a fantasy. But can it truly be dismissed as something so far removed from you? If indeed you wish to cross to our world for a time, I would first ask... Don't say that name in here. ...one question. <laughs> no, he's done good things too. Is fantasy limited to the confines of imagination? Now this is an interesting question. Powerless creation? They pose this question in the demo, obviously. Is fantasy limited to the confines of imagination? Would you call it a powerless creation? I know what I answered, and I'm still going to answer the same thing. But it is an interesting question. Okay. Is fantasy limited to the confines of imagination? Would you call it a powerful or a powerless creation? Don't trust scheming man. Yeah, they kind of tell you up front, right? You don't really need to roll an insight check when someone introduces themselves as the scheming man. Or maybe that's just our assessment of them, right? I can't tell. I don't know. Here's my answer. Fantasy is not limited to the confines of imagination because what you imagine you can perhaps find a way to make reality in some capacity. It is imagination that leads to invention, right? So it is not limited to the confines of imagination. Thus your fantasy then can become reality and enact actual power. You can't call it a powerless creation. I'm going on too long. The answer is not always. More than wishful thinking, more than fiction. Something capable of exactly the realities beyond its bounds. Now he is the scheming man. He might just be, you know, giving me a, just reinforcement no matter what. He might have played the devil's advocate. I don't know. He is the scheming man. The parents of invention are necessity and imagination. See, there you go. We thought of a need, or we saw a need. And it sparked thoughts, right? This must be what you believe. 
and then we made it happen. I confess, my own answer still eludes me. Scheming man. But consider, if fantasy is born from hope, a desire to make the world better than it is, then that hope can be made manifest. Exactly. Thus does change come, and thus is fantasy forged into a new reality. Exactly. Perhaps the story about to unfold before you will tell us. I'm thoroughly invested now myself. Looch, wait till you hear the battle scene. It might take us a minute, because this is an Atlas game. But wait till you hear the battle scene. Whimsy, but still hitting minor resolution. Yeah. Uh, this game's music is fantastic. So, let this tale begin. Here we fucking go. Yep, we are going to play on hard. Apparently there is a step above that we can unlock called Regicide. I'm going to assume that you have to beat hard to unlock Regicide. But you can also change the difficulty whenever. So I don't know. Regicide, bro. It's a crazy name for a hard difficulty. Full animation, let's go. Looks like we're in the clear. The capital's just through this desert. Is it true then? The king is dead. Aye, and the guards are more concerned with the funeral than keeping the road safe. So now the monsters are roaming in broad daylight. No soldiers to stop them. Monsters, huh? Yeah. I've certainly been hearing the stories. Uh, to say nothing of the vacant throne. There's a storm coming. Mark my words. Bring that one, much is certain. What's the problem? They're bandits! Come on, let's see some respect for the militia! Us folk, we're commoners! No crown or church will save us! But Lord Luis will save us one and all. All we ask is a little tribute. You're with us or against us? And if you're against us... The Magitek Walker? <laughs> it does have that feel to it, huh? An igniter? Uh, how'd they get rid of those? <laughs> The character designs in this game are so tight. Huh? Look at you. What have we got here? He's an elder. So he is. No old, no knife is. Filthy gremlin like you. What you got in the capital? <laughs> oh, what's this? Looks like you've been holding out on us, boy. <laughs> Protag looks like a heart, yeah. Hold it! Should have listened to us, chum. <laughs> You're falling lie! Let's want to get stuck like a She is so raw. Steal. I take it you are prepared to die by it. Stand aside! We're in there. Yeah, no. Violence in her oh eyes? My. Yeah. This know place what it already is. feels like a death trap. You hear all that stuff about Lord Luis saving us? Hey, you okay? You still got all your limbs attached? Well, at least they didn't figure out our mission. Definitely could have gone worse. So, to kind of get us caught up, <clears throat> for those of us that didn't experience the demo or the prologue, We'll play a little bit, uh, 
into sort of the amnesia of it all. We bumped our head. What mission? No silent protagonist in this game. Voice acted. A lot of people, including me, expected silent protagonists. Come on! This is no time for jokes. You do know that if anyone finds out who we really are, it's all over, right? The mission's more important than either of our lives. If we screw this up, there's no going back. I'm gonna put this on auto. Let's go. Think we'll make it? Ugh. Find a place where we can see the whole area. So yeah, there's a sprint and there's a dodge. Let's go. Did I play the second Shin Megami Tensei 5 game? I don't think I played either of the five games. I've been clocked out of SMT for a minute. Bro, I think the last the last SMT games I played were, were Nocturne and Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2, I think. I think. Um, let me show you a feature of this game that I really, really enjoy. So they're trying to go for, uh, uh, I, I think, quite a bit of lore or a lot of world building in this game, which I appreciate. If you look at the bottom of the screen where my commands are, you see Memorandum. I can go in here, and it is essentially a full lore glossary for, yeah, nature, magic, history, people, and culture. And so I can come in here and read about my fairy companion, Gallica. Uh, so, and, and what's neat about this is I think you can pull this up when you are in dialogue as well. So, for example, if somebody mentions something in your life, Man, I kind of forgot what that is. You can go immediately into the memorandum and probably find it. Yeah, I really enjoy that. We might have some times uh, on these streams where I kind of stop for a second and we revise what we know. And uh, but for now, we'll just kind of we'll just kind of get into it. So I do happen to know that here in this first area. Stop! We are not meant to tussle with what's out here. Watch out! So you have kind of a scan. You use Gallica to. Uh, okay. Kind of survey what's out there. They look pretty tough. Careful now. So, we gotta get out of here. Run! Oh, I think they see us. No, we're too quick. Look. See, even now in this little cutscene, I can I can hit the memorandum if I want to. At any point. Just checking, but you do remember what we're here to do, right? I played the demo with uh, Japanese voice acting. I figure since I have my stream categorically uh, set to English language, I should probably follow through with that on voice acting as well, just in case. Some people are only listening. But um, the Japanese voice acting, I think, was obviously very good. And so far, as is usually the case, I think, in, in Atlas games, the English voice acting is uh, pretty solid as well. I enjoy that. Refresh my memory. Right. <laughs> what am I doing again? 
Oh, I don't know. The mission that's more important than our own lives? First, we get to the Royal Capital, and get you enlisted as a guardsman at the Army's Recruitment Center. This could decide the fate of the whole country. We either do our jobs, or we die. And if it's all the same to you, I'd rather stay alive. So we've got to see this mission through. Come on. We don't want the sun to go down on us in the wastes. Let's pull ourselves together and get back on the road. You know what they say. Anxiety breeds the world's cruelest monsters. I mean, fairies say that at least. I can at least cast my usual spell for you. It's the small comforts, right? Right. Yo, that bardic inspiration though? The effect of Gallica's music is inspired. Music was the first magic this world ever knew, she says. Bars. Look! Over there! Let's go. Soundtrack. Are you kidding? Crazy. <clears throat> Absolutely crazy. It's all clear. Watch out! You'll never catch me. You'll never do it. No. Looks like they fell. Run faster than these dogs. I don't like this. I know. Uh. People, okay, they're still following me. I was gonna stop. But this, the sky box, right? It's like <clears throat> the sky box is almost like a watercolor what? thing. Uh, not good. Run for it! Uh, Iggy. It's looking like Nasty. This land of eight tribes and three nations, all blessed by the power of magic. The United Kingdom of Ukronia. The year is 785. Ukronia is shaken to the core by the sudden death of its king. Anxiety breeds dissent among the tribes. Disparities tear them apart, and no mortal mind remembers the heroic tales upon which their land was built. The plot of this game has got me fired up, honestly. Power vacuum and national struggle. Yeah, they get right to it. <laughs> You're a sucker for it? Yeah, me too. This is the greatest story ever yet. Dying, yeah, dog. yeah. Don't try to deny it! You trample the law for the fun of it! Let it be known, for misuse of an igniter, you will hang by the neck until dead! <laughs> yeah! There's no way that crowd was going to listen to anything a Paribus said. <sighs> Such a shame. Might you spare some coin? Bless you. Oh, careful! Hurry. <laughs> Don't you have any street smarts? Yeah, he was excited. On, he got up early so he could get there. Look, we're not tourists here. We've got to stay focused. Right. You noticed back on the wagon? You might be the only elder here, in the whole city even.
We're in the city. The capital's incredible. Just look at all the different tribes. Yeah, look at the... You never see this kind of diversity out in the countryside. I sort of don't know how to describe... I see more Plumars and Roussants than anyone else. The, uh, the style that we're seeing, right? Like... Uh... Like, kind of the, the coloration of the, the buildings and everything has sort of like this green to blue gradient and it's, it's layered in a really interesting way. Victorian England, but with elves. Yeah, totally. That is the vibe here. Uh, it does seem that way. So here we go. Not that it's very balanced. I see more, what is it, Claymars and Roussants? 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 than anyone else. I played it in Japanese the first time. I don't know what they, what they pronounce it. But we see those two terms and we go into the memorandum. Okay, well they're right here, right? So, you know, I guess to equate this to D&D, uh, &D, they're a little tiefling-esque, right? Obviously I'm mainly saying that because of the horns. But let's check this out. So the Claymore tribe composes the largest population in all the allied kingdoms. Their most distinctive features are the horns which grow on both sides of their head. Claymars have a broad diversity of facial and body types which has essentially made them average. The Ukrainian royal family are Claymar, and members of this tribe hold a majority of important positions within the government, leading many Claymars to internalize the belief that they are the kingdom's most preeminent tribe. Okay. So maybe a little bit of a superiority complex here with the Clamars. The Roussan, essentially the elves. Um, one of the most populous tribes of the United Kingdoms, second only to the Claymar. Long pointed ears are the most distinguishing feature. They often boast excellent physiques, which has given them superior martial prowess. Roussan women are stronger than most men of their tribes. Many inevitably work in the military and often hold key offices. They are considered as influential as the Claymar, and the two tribes are sometimes called the prevailing tribes. Let's go ahead and read about the Parapus as well. We're here, right? <clears throat> so these are sort of the beast folk, right? The, the man that we saw, unfortunately, hanged. Uh, a tribe recognizable by bestial ears and a tail. There are many variations in their hair and skin colors, including cold-colored skin not seen in other tribes. They are physically adept and often honest with their emotions, giving them a reputation for hedonism, for better or for worse. They are drawn to parties and festivities, and while this happy-go-lucky charm is often to their credit, it can also be seen as recklessness. So they have kind of like a uh, satyr vibe to them. Due to this stereotype, they are looked down upon by other tribes, which prevents them from securing a foothold in politics despite being nearly as populous as the Roussan and Claymar tribes. The discrimination against them is especially obvious in large cities. So, an unfo unfortunate bit of history there. I'm realizing now that uh, there were second pages here. Claymars value freedom and dislike illogical restraint. They enjoy cultivating discussion, but do not always consider the situation or appropriateness of doing so, which occasionally leads to conflict. However, some studies suggest this disposition is what drives them to seek governmental positions and other important offices. Many Rousson pride themselves on outperforming others in strength. While this can be perceived as a self-disciplined competitiveness, on the flip side, there are many with a belligerent temperament obsessed with proving superiority in any situation. So I guess with that characterization, I could see how that is a problem between the Claymars and the Roussants. It's just being like, we're the best. No, we're the best. Why does there have to be a best? Which means a dopey elder kid's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Try to keep your head down, okay? And we are an elder, as they keep saying. Hey, did you hear what they're saying about his majesty? They say it wasn't illness at all. I heard it was foul play. Assassination. The mistake I've made here in this stream is that I didn't show the opening cutscene. The opening cutscene kind of gives you a glimpse into what happened to the king. 
in a pretty crazy way. If I find a way, I think there's a menu I'll get to eventually that lets me replay cutscenes. If it's in there, we'll watch it. But it's just like the prince, isn't it? They say he was attacked in the dead of night. A war of succession is okay. coming, I tell you. That's an important drop right there. So first of all, the word on everyone's lips is assassination. I heard what happened to the king was an assassination. And then this lady here says, but it's just like the prince, isn't it? They say he was attacked in the dead of night. So the prince was attacked as well. A war of succession is coming. If the king is dead, and the prince is dead as well, who will become the king, right? Sounds like monsters have been prowling the countryside. They're sending the guard out to deal with them. The army's really gone to hell. It's a far cry from when we had Count Luis at the helm, I'll tell you that much. Hard to see how the nation can come back from this. We'd not have to ask if the prince was still alive. They're hitting their vapes. I didn't notice that in the demo, actually. But they're definitely just outside this building vaping. <sighs> the king dead. His son stricken. Are there none left to bear the weight of the crown? So check this out. A little bit of a flashback here. We just heard those ladies on the street say, well, king was assassinated, then it must be just like the prince. Here we see, perhaps, the prince. We've done all in our power, but not even the kingdom's best. The saint could purify this affliction. Over ten years he has languished under this curse. How much longer can his body hold out? No doubt his highness would protest. But uh, since he cannot, we have no choice. So here's the thing. They just said, been afflicted by this curse for ten years. Are we to believe that the prince is actually alive? For the man who cursed his highness and murdered our king, there can be no mercy. I never thought I would have to ask this of you. But there are so few of us left now. There is no one else to turn to. Will you infiltrate the military to deliver a message to our contact there? This is your mission. For all our sakes, you cannot fail. Hey, are you listening? Well, I guess I can't blame you for feeling nostalgic. You and the prince were pretty close. Anyway, getting to the capital was only the beginning. Now comes the real high stakes part. You gotta go get enlisted so you can meet up with our operative. Remember, nobody here knows who we are. Nobody here knows the prince might still have a claim to the throne. Nobody here knows the prince might still have a claim to the throne. Big drop. Big drop. That means if we get busted, that's it. Nobody's gonna save us. Step one, let's figure out where the recruitment center is. Shouldn't be too hard considering the need for soldiers. No, we are not the prince. The, so? the person that you just saw in sort of those magical vines in sort of a comatose state, that's the prince. As far as I can tell, Ten years ago, the prince was attacked. I think the public at large, and in including the uh, king's enemies, perhaps, think that the prince is dead, right? So now there's this issue of succession. If the public thinks the prince is dead and now the king is dead, who will take the throne? But we know, as part of our super secret team, that the prince is actually not dead. They are merely cursed. So, if we are able to perhaps solve this problem of the curse or do something else, um, the prince maybe walks again and becomes king. Who knows? 
Very interesting. So we can go to a local map. We can uh, hit Y to talk to Galica about what we're doing. Whatever will I do? We can save now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save over my demo run. I'm not overly attached to it. Um, I am kind of thinking really quick that maybe we'll go to the main menu. And I, I kind of want to show you all the... Uh, unless I can do it in here. No, I can't. Okay. Um, let's go back to the title screen just super quick. And I'll show you the intro scene. We might have to let this rock for a second. Um, because this is an Atlas game, we're not guaranteed uh, we're not guaranteed sort of uh, how do I want to phrase this there's going to be a lot of exposition we may not get to any significant battles today in this stream I don't know but I am moving a little quicker than I did in the demo I did a lot of uh, stopping and smelling the roses in the demo Yeah, yeah. Show us the goods. Here we go. I trust this will suffice. God smiles upon the generous. Oh, away with you! Back to your second beggar! <laughs> A land grotesque as its people. You dreamt of Utopia. You saw the tribes united as one. Oh. That dream died long ago. You should have done the same. <laughs> Your kingdom will perish alongside you. Yeah, dude. The dagger. Swords are iconic for a sort of like By my leadership. And I legend. Fathom Daggers, it. though. His Majesty Subterfuge. killed in his own bed. The blooms upon the prince's grave had yet to wilt. Without an heir to wear the crown, what will become of the royal magic? Thus vulnerable, an invasion might undo us. From within or without. The state hangs on a precipice. It may even come to civil war. In dark times, we must stand together. Your eminence. Who could do this? Few could even enter the king's chambers, let alone draw close. And yet... And yet, his majesty's arcane power could deflect near any blade. With all the royal bloodline's magic, who could harm him at all? Shadows stir in the castle, just as they did with the prince. What hellbound soul could end a royal life? Who would dare such atrocity? Huh? Luis. A shame to die with no heirs. The prince was taken too soon. And only a king may wield the royal scepter, the very crux of his vaunted bloodline's magic, which made such a fine deterrent to war. One has to ask, them dead, who shall take the throne? So Luis 
off of that cutscene alone is my new problematic favorite. War is on the horizon. Before they command that I dry my pen, I must finish my final work. It is a tale of hope that may yet salvage this world. It isn't right. This idea of foreigners has only ever been a tool against the foreign. If we could end such prejudice, surely war would be next to fade. We would be free to travel to far-flung lands. The reality is, we are riddled with anxiety. We fight, we oppress, and magic is but a tool of war. Our world could be better. Can we not dream such dreams? In such a world, they need no sorcery. A megapolis is built through learning and skilled labor. Glass spires reach the heavens. Safe nights with no dark shadows. Streets well-traveled. And in the laws of these emotionally satisfied people, it reads, all lives are equal. I know. Just a daydream. Castle on a cloud. Yet I have faith. I believe that fiction can become hope, wielded by a worthy avatar. I believe a hero will stand true and change the world. After all, this world need not stay like this forever. The will to believe in something beyond us, indeed that, is what we call fantasy. Ooh. <laughs> um, so there you have it. I feel like that opening scene is actually pretty important. I almost thought they would show it again uh, when I hit new game. I but there you go. Whatever will I do? Bro is diabolical. Talking about Luis, yeah. Oh, Luis is crazy. So check this out. We are an Elda, and this woman here says, Isn't it obvious? The church has made it clear. The Elda wield devilish magic that defies the teachings of sancticism. <laughs> exactly. So, our character kind of over and over again in this city, you'll see. People are like, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. <sighs> City, so cool. Damn. Hmm. So, okay. Hear me out. This character right here has got to be like an upcoming party member, right? Come on, camera. Hmm. Uh, right though? Like, must be. Must be. So, you. I'm thinking she's like, you know, she's got the, the ninja class look to her, obviously. Hmm. Wait one second.
text messages. Um, maybe someone just snapped with the design and wanted her in the game still. Yeah, she could just be like a cool person we get to know. There are there are plenty like, uh, you know, in Persona games, there's a lot of people you can spend time with that you don't necessarily have join your party. But I mean, I just think, I just really think he probably a party member. Damn. Look at that. The new model's out now. So now we're looking at what they call igniters. I could be out there slinging spells like a master if I had one of those. I guess that's the big city for you. Everyone and their mother has a magic igniter. So many different types, too. So let's go in here and check out what igniters are. They're essentially, if you want to put it in D&D uh, &D terms, they are what, would, what you would consider to be your arcane focus. A tool that acts as a conduit for magic power without which people cannot perform magic. To own or use them, one must obtain a permit from the kingdom by passing a test, with some exceptions, such as those serving in the state army. Igniters can be costly depending on power and specifications, and purchasing them is akin to buying land or housing. The expense is so great, buying more than one igniter would be difficult even with the entire lifetime income of the average commoner. So it's a, it is a, a privileged thing, it's almost even a classist thing. In order to prevent accidents and crime, the Crown Theocracy and the Magic Association have exclusive production rights of igniters. So it's also heavily regulated. Unauthorized production is considered a serious offense. The time needed to cast magic depends on the user's skill, but can also be slightly impacted by the capabilities of the igniter itself. While using an igniter while sedentary poses little problem, activating an igniter while moving is difficult, and it is thus advised to use them cautiously. Yeah, until you see the price tag. Can't imagine what it's like having to wave around some shiny stick to use magic. Me? I can whip out magic anytime I like. And I can even see the magla in the air. Though, I'm not exactly an archmage. Wonders never cease. A fairy and an elden child. Are you new to our fair city? Well, I suggest you keep a low profile. Trust me when I say, you don't want to catch the eyes of the lords and ladies. Ah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I run this humble shop. Are you in the market for an igniter? Yeah. Here's something that might catch a foreigner's eye. Look at that thing. This is modeled after the royal scepter and would make the perfect souvenir. Yeah, the Fae don't, they don't hesitate to dunk on you, right? You're like, I learned how to... I learned how to uh, cast a cantrip, and they're like, you fool. Stupid fool. Modeled after the Royal Scepter. So there you have it, that's what the Royal Scepter looks like. It's kind of crazy, right? Doesn't it look like a, like a rib cage? Kind of attached to a spine there in the center. Yeah, how much? How much is it? You're not really going to fall for that, are you? How would you even know what the Royal Scepter looks like to begin with? <laughs> yeah. You've really never heard of it. Wow. Entry Where do level I even magic. Start? Uh a symbol and instrument of the crown's sovereignty passed down through generations if you believe the legends it houses incredible magic world shattering power more practically you might call it the world's most potent magic igniter 
and in the king's hands, it was enough of a deterrent to stave off invasion. Now he's dead, with no living heir either. Tragic, isn't it? Kingly magic is of little use without a king. You picked a bad time to visit, boy. I don't know why you're here, but there's trouble brewing. Another great character design. I'll keep that in mind. A word of caution, then. Your survival is your own responsibility. Well, that was unnecessarily ominous. She has a point, though. We'll need to be careful. Anyway, you don't have time to hang around chatting with the locals. You've got a recruitment office to find. Let's head okay. there. We won't dilly dally too much out here. Give me the food, I say. Who else can it be? Yo, look at the transition menu or the, the screen, the loading screen. They didn't have to do that. They didn't have to spaz like that. But they did. small talk because people are mean and we are heading to the military recruitment center. Hmm. I'm out of ideas. Look at this though. Look at the city. Oh, I remember what I was going to do. Let's, uh, is it here? No, wait, maybe. Aha, camera speed. Take this down. I feel like it's a pretty fast swivel when I'm trying to look around. Yeah, that'll do for now. <clears throat> Dear me! That must be the recruitment center. I'll let you take it from here. It should be pretty straightforward. Oh, and if they start asking questions, just be as honest as you can. Lying will only make us more suspicious. So long as you don't compromise the mission, you're fine. Good luck in there. Knock them dead. Okay, you got this. <laughs> A blue blood, are you? The army's no place for velvet swaddled lordlings. Why are you here? Perhaps your noble family collapsed under its own weight. Is that it? Lineage seems a strange measure for a soldier's word. I was wondering what his English voice would sound like. I'm looking to enlist. Is that enough for you or not? An uppity one, aren't you? Fine, Lordling. Welcome to the Guard. Where it'll be your privilege to die screaming and bloody in service of your country. Yo. Person there with the red hair? Next to the one who's talking now. It's another, uh... It's another wild design. I guess somebody's moving something heavy up and down the stairs in this building. It has that sound of like... It has that sound of like, step by step, someone like moving a, a, like a washer on a dolly down the stairs it's fucking with me it's been going on for a long time <clears throat> anyway giving Catherine vibes yeah yeah 
I see how you got there. But mark my words. War will turn your arrogance to piss. When your corpse is plucked from the mud, do try to look patriotic. I think that one came through the microphone. It's so loud. These earbuds, like, go in my ear, right? I shouldn't really be able to hear very much. This shit is thumping out there, my lord. Okay, let's run this back. My man said, but mark my words, war will turn your arrogance to piss. <laughs> That's crazy. When your corpse is plucked from the mud, do try to look patriotic. That's crazy. They're watching the stream. Yeah, Rousing they're stream sniping words, me. Captain. With noise on the stairs. Will buy loyalty. No wonder nobody crazy. respects the guard anymore. But I'm here now, so perhaps the kingdom isn't a lost cause. Insolent pup! You will learn your place. Don't. The healers have enough on their plates already. Darn. Darn. <laughs> be gone, and be thankful you're still in one piece. When the voice actor's contract gets renewed, be thankful you're still in one piece. Alright, next. Hurry it up. Huh, an elder. I thought your kind was long gone. Age 18. An orphan, too. The army can always use more of those. It sounds like a lot of people's first D&D characters. DM is like... So, tell me about your character. Well, I just turned 18. I have no attachments to anyone. Everyone I ever knew is dead. And the DM is like... Okay, let's... Uh, <laughs> let's figure out more we can work with than that. <laughs> We figure it out along the way. Pooch says we he said the quiet part loud. We love orphans with no resources. It it is an astounding uh path that people often fall to in fantasy games. So what brings you to enlist? Um, so, Gallica said there's no point in lying because it might further expose us. So I'm just gonna say, yeah, I wanna fight for change. I want to fight for real change. Lofty words for a gutter rat with an empty coin purse, no? So, what can you bring to our beloved core? Any skills to speak of? So I think this is where we pick our, kind of our, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Our most proficient stat, right? So the first time I came across this in the demo, I go, ah, oh, strength, intelligence, constitution, dexterity, luck, right? I tend to favor small but quick in fantasy games. I'm That's what small, we're gonna do. But quick. Yes, I could see that. Always the cowards who run the fastest, eh? Right, last order of business. Make your mark or sign your name if you're actually literate. Damn, bro. Please enter the name of this story's protagonist as I mercilessly bump the microphone with my controller. Okay. So. Story time. 
story time. For years and years and years, uh, with no programming experience at all, I've been slowly jotting down ideas for uh, a JRPG were I ever to be in a position to make one. The two main characters of that story are characters named Ubel and Dre. They are based on the Blue Mage and the Red Mage from the Final Fantasy series, and Ubel and Dre are anagrams of the word blue and the word red. In a lot of games I play, I name my characters Ubel, because that's who you're meant to play in the game that, that I've been thinking about. Then, years later, I start watching a very, uh, very good anime called Freerun that I think some of you will be familiar with. You get to a certain part of that anime and there is a very cool uh, mage named Ubel. And she's awesome too. But it made me do the, the Leonardo DiCaprio meme where I sat up and I pointed at the, the TV. But that's what we're gonna do. We have blue hair. It's an anagram of blue. We're gonna do it. There we go. Very cool, also terrifying, but sure, yeah. Yeah, she is definitely terrifying, but I like her. You know your letters, do you? We'll get some use out of you yet. All right, lad. Welcome to the guard. Yes! I'm sure you heard about the monster sighting, so stay sharp out there. We're shorthanded as it is, so be a good lad and try not to get killed on your first deployment. You can pick up your kit at reception. Standard issue guardsman armor and nighter. Kingdom property. So if you break it, it's coming out of your commission. So we get armor and an igniter. On Congratulations. Your way. Next. Is <sighs> another unassuming character, right? No way they're important. Because I take it you overheard my interview. Yes, guilty as charged. I am a noble, but just a countryside son of a lord. My family is of no real consequence. Well. Let's just say I have my own circumstances. I'm volunteering to fight in order to protect the kingdom, foolish or not. <sighs> Therapist man says they said tribes don't matter. Their tribe don't matter in the army, but they'll probably put me up front as a meat shield. Not that I can find better work. I wish I could serve Count Luis. His army's built on merit, so even a parapus stands a chance. Join the queue. Let's get in line. If saturation is to be trusted, they do stick out. Yeah, that's a, a good general guide, right? Look at that, right? Look at the line here. What of those huge monsters? You think that's why we're low on soldiers? Wish they'd have told us that. What do they call them? It's something like, um, human. Next. Another Clamar. Wait. No. You don't look like the others. Surely not. An elder? It's the first of your kind I've seen. Move it. There's a priority around here. We're arming squires and children with igniters now. Waste of good gear. Spare off in my hands. Give it here. 
Brute force and crude insults. The world is yours for the taking. Care to say that again, boy? We all have our reasons to enlist. Now get back in line. Oh, another high and mighty Clamar, is it? Clamar. Maybe not Claymar. Claymar Braxton. You think your pretty words will measure up to pure Roussant strength? So, yeah, Roussant I had right, it sounds like. Oh, to forget the tribes. This is a matter of pride. Now, you owe us both an apology. Come on, no fighting in the ranks. <sighs> Sorry for making a scene. You all right? Thanks. You didn't have to do that. Just felt like stepping in. Don't worry about it. Well, see you around. Try not to die out there. Don't make my job any harder, please. Here, your igniter. Let's go. These days, most come with their own magma crystals. So with practice, anyone can use magic. To an extent, anyway. It's not the sort of thing you can master in a day. For now, newbies like you best focus on surviving. Mm. And take this, too. Protect it with your life. The Royal Capital Vicinity Map. Wow, that's a real map! It's dangerous to even chart the wilds, but this is full of details. Only the military could pull this together. Listen up, striplings. Striplings. My name is Captain Klinger. And as of this moment, you miserable lot are under my command. I'm sure you've all heard about our forces being tied up with the funeral proceedings for His Majesty. But if you think you're on cushy security detail, think again. First, you will be deployed to a fortress at the northern border, where you will be trained into true guards. Our veterans there will teach you the one thing you need to master if you're to survive. Pain. Perfect. That's exactly where our contacts hold up. Enjoy tonight's sleep, because it's the last full night's rest you'll get. Dismissed! Taking every chance they get to let us know just how bad it's going to be. Look at all the other recruits. They really are desperate for new blood. Oh, right. I know you don't know what our contact looks like yet, but he'll know you by your sword. He'll also know right away why we've come. And don't worry, I'll recognize him. Well, the charming captain is probably right. We should get some rest before tomorrow. Um... Hey. You awake? Yeah, I'm awake. Sorry to bug you. Look, I just... have a lot on my mind. Can't seem to fall asleep. I'd heard about what it was like in the capital, but still... when you hear and see all this prejudice out in the open... it's a lot. Hey, what's good, Curb? Okay? Thanks for stopping in. Good to see you. You know what time it is. It never gets easier. We went new file. New file hard mode. Instead of carrying over my progress for the sake of the, the broadcast, you know? Yeah, I could tell. Try to put it behind you, okay? I assume you might be hopping on this Some people are even today saying as well. It's the lesser tribe's fault that the monsters are showing up at all? These are the same kind of people who burned down your village, remember? I'd rather not think about it. Oh, you're right. Sorry. I'll drop it. At work, but decided to slide through hard mode, dragon is hard. I didn't get to fight the dragon on, uh... Or I didn't try to fight the dragon on 
my demo run. I took their advice and I ran past the dragon. But I am, I'm playing on hard this time and I think I'm gonna give some stuff a go. I wonder if that grinding method you showed me still works. Probably it does. I feel like that's not something they would remove. The prince was kind to take you in. He cared more about who you were than what you were. I can see why you'd want to repay him. Oh, speaking of, he's the one who gave you that book, right? Word up. Can I see it? So, we learned a little bit more about our, our ties to the prince here. We know we're here to do something about the curse that the prince is under. And we know that we were pretty close to the prince, maybe even good friends. We now know that our village was burned down. And after that happened, the prince took us in. And I think also gave us the book, I think is what Gallic is saying. Had to grind to about level nine or 10. Okay. Yeah. We might be, we might be trying to take on the dragon this time. Sure, I guess. I gotta say, I've been curious. Thanks. It's what you call a fantasy story, right? So it's a fantasy world made up by the author. Same. I loved those kinds of stories. Yeah, I I'm glad the protagonist has voice lines as well. Okay, let's see. It says the young traveler was amazed by the world he saw. In this world, there is only one tribe. All people accept each other, and no soul is born in See, except that's not... I'm waiting for the shoe to drop on this, because this book obviously references something very akin to our real world, right? And they keep reinforcing this idea of, in this world, there is only one tribe. All people accept each other, and no soul is born into discrimination. Here's the thing. That would definitely be some revisionist history, right? If we are talking about our world, the unfortunate reality is that this isn't necessarily true. It's the goal that a lot of us strive toward, but it's not really like that. Right? So when I say I'm waiting for the shoe to drop, I'm wondering if there's going to be some kind of like brutal twist where they find out that this utopia, this megapolis, if they, as they've described it, is uh, in a lot of ways just as bad as the one they're in now. A lot of war, a lot of important resources used for bad instead of good. A lot of discrimination. I don't want to wax poetic here, but you see what I'm getting at. Wow. So not even any fairies? I guess that's If they the are in fact referencing talking, our right? world, and it seems uh, pretty clear that they are, that's my interpretation. I don't know. In such a world, there is no need for sorcery. A megapolis is built through learning and labor. Towers of glass that reach the heavens. Safe nights with no dark shadows. Busy streets well traveled. And in the laws of these emotionally satisfied people, it reads, all lives are equal. Wow. I see. Now it is, of course, a big step to put something like that in writing. In terms of law and other things, all lives are equal. No magic. But unfortunately, we know that's just not. Quality for all. Um, it really does sound like a fantasy. That's not the reality for our world, as, as much as we might like it to be. World. Something to strive toward for sure, but it's something we fall short of, constantly, generationally. It could be one of those gotcha deals, like uh, here we don't, here they don't need sure, right? But I would argue that. The magic they're referring to in their world is analogous to just the crazy advancement of tech in our world. 
I think maybe you could, you know, look at that in some ways as our magic. Hey, are you asleep already? You know how hard it is for me to turn these pages on my own? Ugh. Well, guess I'll just read more later. Good night. I would like to record the events thus far. Let's go cutscene. Shouldn't you be resting? I'm fine. In fact, I'm glad we have this chance to talk. I've been reading. And I hope that someday, we can make our kingdom like the place in this book. You said it was some kind of fantasy novel, didn't you? Hmm. Our lives are decided at birth. By tribal purity, or by the differences that make us who we are. I don't want that to be the world we live in. The Elder here are a perfect example. If you'd not sheltered me, I would never have survived. And yet... They burned your home down. It's tragic. And no one should have to suffer so. Someone needs to fix... <coughs> you okay? <coughs> Don't push yourself so hard. Reality is much too cruel. I know that. But I'll fight it. I'll fight to the end. I'm a prince. But I need to be a hero. One worthy of the throne. A hero? One who can lead. A beacon who will pierce the darkness when all seems lost. My father taught me that. <laughs> In his stories, the kingdom was full of legendary heroes. So I can't give up. Yeah, that is an immune My system often world. compromised. People can believe fantasy. in their future. Their birth doesn't matter. Not that I expect it will be easy. I believe in you. <laughs> Familiar words. When I'm down, when I struggle, you're always there to help me through it. <sighs> huh? Let's do it. You'll be a hero. Trust me. I've seen those. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of. There's one of those that's like give up either. the famous one. Trust me. And I can't think of what it is right now. It's something like, like this is awful, but it's something like atomic bomb versus coughing baby. It's one of those memes, like you're talking about Hooch, beefy five layer burrito from Taco Bell versus immune system of Victoria Orphan. But uh, yeah, the the one that I hear referenced all the time, I think, is just atomic bomb versus coughing baby. I I might be <laughs> butchering that. It's it's terrible. Until arrival at the northern border fort, one day remains. The tome is fire emblem coded. Yeah. But you see what I'm talking about? Like, look at all these menus and all of these different loading screens and sort of transitional screens. Like, every single part of this game has style to it. Every part of it is crazy to me. Wonder how far we've come. Let's find our destination, the northern border fort. The first time I played this game, I said, Northern border fort sounds like something you cannot say five times fast. 
I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So let me get knocked. Let me get let me get uh, locked in here. Northern Border Fort. Okay, I'm going to really feel all that. Northern Border Fort. All right. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Northern Border Fort, Northern... I, I, I made it to two. I made it to two. I could feel myself about to fall. You know when you catch yourself when you're about to fall? I could feel myself about to fall. Northern Border Fort. Northern Border Fort. That's not even fast. Northern Border Fort. 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 <laughs> I had to, that was a, a struggle. That was a struggle to do. And I don't even think it was that fast. It starts to sound like nothing but a foot. Yeah, it, 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 it took on a different tone toward the end, for sure. The this Northern Border Fort. A fortress built to defend Grand Trad during the Annex War. After long disuse, it is now manned due to frequent monster sightings. Hey, don't forget! Galica says the northern border fort. This is where our contact should be, so hopefully we find him quickly. We got okay. it. All we can do for now is rest. We have a big day tomorrow. The carriage transporting the new recruits arrives at its destination. The Northern Border Fort. <laughs> the towering fortress was built during the Annex War in the mountains at the edge of the territory. Even now, soldiers are sent there for its strategic importance. What if we kissed at the northern border fort? And to combat the rising waves of monsters, fresh-faced soldiers disembark from their coaches at the foot of a steep ascent to the fort, the first of many uphill battles. Oh, finally! I can hardly feel my legs. Listen well, you lackwits. The battlefield is no place to sit on your asses, and the border front is always a battlefield. The call to arms could sound at any time. Stand to, curs. You have the honor to serve at the command of Captain Klinger, war hero, tactician, master of arms. When I earned rank in the trenches, forged in the blood of my comrades, Spare us this drivel. Cur. Yeah. Say, friend, I'm curious. What is it about that book? There you go. That's that is that's a good one for D and D. Yeah. Cur. Oh, Hooch, I meant to tell you. Uh, in the world of Fire Pro Wrestling, our little universe that we've created. Uh, my guy and your guy have been putting on classics. Anytime my guy and your guy are against each other, it's a banger. Like, every time. And you're up on me right now. But it, it, it is a noticeable trend. This dude says, what is it about the book that's captivated you so... Well, yeah, a world with, with only one tribe. It tells of I a world suppose. united the, as one tribe. The highlight they're looking at here. No discrimination, eh? A far cry from our world, then. Setting me up for the hero story, exactly. So it's yeah. describing. You are definitely the bad guy in this scenario. A utopia, perhaps. I'm something of a reader myself, but that's not like any book I've read. You know, when the late king took the throne, he was quite the idealist himself. He made grand claims about unifying the people under his rule. Never managed to do it in the end, of course. Reform takes more than high-minded eloquent exactly right. speeches. 
Maybe he was too blind to see that himself. Every baby face needs a heel. Listen to you. That is exactly right. A babe with his first sword, thinking he knows better than a king. Keep your mouth shut. No one cares what you think. <sighs> Nobody asked you. Something to say? Go on. I'm listening. If it's a fight you want, draw your blade. <laughs> Didn't think you'd just challenge me straight out. You've got guts for a lesser tribesman. Can you tell... Who says can you tell I watched a single wrestling documentary? Yeah. Uh, look, man. It's a wild world. I don't always watch wrestling, but I'm always in the know about it. And I do have moments where I check in on it again here and there. It's been a long time since I've I've been like a weekly watcher. Um, but it is a fascinating industry with a lot of really messed up stuff that happened throughout its history. Um, but there's nothing else like it. There is nothing else like it. Well, Clamar. I'll let it go this time, but only because I like your friend. Next time, keep your complaining to yourself. That's the last thing I need. Though I suppose I deserved it in part, speaking ill of the dead and all. My mouth tends to get ahead of my thoughts sometimes. Although, I'm glad a bad habit seems to have drawn us together. Which says, I honestly gained a huge appreciation for the insane amount of work that went into making it happen. Literal blood, sweat, dudes. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's a crazy industry. Crazy, crazy industry. Like many things built on the bones of some really terrible stuff. Um, but but a lot of, of, of good has come from it as well. Oh, never got round to an introduction. I'm Stroll. Leon Stroll, son of the Count of Halia. And you are? Leon Stroll, son of the Count of Halia. That's my name. I have that right? It's got a certain weight to it. For what it's worth, my title doesn't mean much. Here and now, we're peers and equals. By the skin of my teeth! Now, um, where was I? Right! As for you, you like the little horns? Meat. Yeah. Someone help! New baby horns. Uh oh. Is that a, a soldier? Hey, speak to me, man. What happened? Listen, stay on guard. Is is too. <sighs> Not one of mine. Must be one of the fort's guard. Those damn vultures across the border. They must have heard about the king's death. Uh, anyway, to the fort. Double time. I'll stay behind to uh, see to the poor bastard's wounds. You want us to go on ahead? Alone? Captain Klinger, come Shouldn't on now. Should we send a team back to ask for... I knew fear would take you at the first step. You want to turn tail? Are you a traitor to the cause? The guard has no place for cowards. You are part of His Majesty's royal army. Swallow your fear, fight with pride, and we'll all have medals this time tomorrow. He's right. We're warriors. Up there is our first chance of glory and riches. Damned if I'm gonna waste it. Let's go. Damn it. Well, I suppose this is what we signed up for. Onward, to the fort then. To the fort. Hey, I've got a bad feeling about this. I like the Gallica also has armor. It's hard to explain, but it's like there's a stench in the air, and it's getting stronger. Hey, did something happen? Wait, is that a... F 
fairy? Did you catch it yourself? She's with me. She's with me. Yes, and I have a name, by the way. It's Galica. So you travel together? You've stayed well hidden for quite a while. Well, I didn't want anyone making a fuss. But we've got bigger problems right now. I can't shake this feeling. We gotta be careful. Agreed. I'll follow orders, but I'm not about to let this armchair general send me to my death. Let's take a moment, then head in once we're prepared. I assume you know how to use an igniter properly? I'm not so sure. He's never used one before. I mean, he's a commoner, so not much Talk chance to... Talk revisor? Yeah. Exactly. Fair enough. Well, just stay behind me and you'll be all right. I swear I won't let you die. I'm with you. Got a new party member. Stroll. A brave fighter trying to conceal his nobility has become your ally. Oh, this is bad. I didn't think you'd actually have to fight anyone. How is that? Mad disappointed? Yeah, I didn't really hear anything about it, honestly. I just hope our contact Boring. forts That's okay. too bad. Let's keep our guard up and hope we find out. So I can only play for just a little bit longer. The closer we get to 11, okay. uh, the closer I get to some stuff I have to do. Uh, in general, these streams will be about two hours long. 9 a.m. Central to 11 a.m. Uh, I do have some stuff coming up today. I'm kind of trying to see reasonably what I can get done here because I think we're about to kind of head into something, you know? Galica says, this is an unexpected turn of events, but don't lose sight on our mission. Yep. Our ally that we're supposed to meet should be somewhere here. Stroll says, what was that you were talking about? You said something about your ally. Actually, it's nothing. I was just worried about the soldiers inside. Yeah. Well, whatever the case, the situation concerns me too. Let's go inside. Okay. There's an auto save. This is. We've made it to the northern border fort. It's nothing but a fort, and it's the northern border fort. You smell something bad in the elevator. You look over in the corner and there's someone looking at you like a little gremlin. You go, what? It's nothing but a fort. <laughs> Meanwhile. There it is. That's a human. Stand your ground! Charging! Pursue! <laughs> We have to help the survivors! <laughs> Biblically accurate human. They referred to it as a human. Oh. Damn it. Oh. Grius, I hope you're safe. <sighs> Look at this, huh? Jung jing jung jung. Okay. Things are bad. Nice find. Looks like it could be useful. Medicine. Medicinal item. This is bad. Oh my gosh. What? It's smaller, but is that a human too? If it's human, do we even stand a chance? Troll says, trust me, I have a history with them. What do you think? Let's do it. Got it? Take care of it, please. So, you can attack in the overworld but you can also just 
hit Y to go straight to turn-based mode, which will like full-on start a battle. But you see here, you can press Y anytime, but if you use attacks to stun enemies first, you'll start the battle with an advantage. Stay on the offensive by continuously attacking with X to deplete the enemy's break gauge that appears next to them, eventually stunning them. So it is kind of that uh, loop that Final Fantasy kind of established from 13 and on, where it's like, you really want to break their gauge and then you can get busy. Things will be fine. So like, you know, right here, sorry, there's like a lock on button that I can't remember right now. This doesn't matter. Do this. this is our chance. Now they're stunned. Stay calm, and you start the fight with that kind of advantage, because there's no. So X to attack with your equipped weapon, or Y to use skills. And you see the turn icons at the top of the screen. When all turn icons are consumed, the opponent's round begins. Right? Uh, okay, so here we go. I didn't know about this. On hard, enemies receive an additional turn icon in most battles. Okay. There we go. Got it. So let's take a look. We've got Mage Fire. We've got our physical attack. Let's try a Mage Fire. Okay. Try some of this! Critical strike, so they stay downed, right? We get another hit. Let's go! Burn! Nice. Yeah, the stagger mechanic. Is that? No way I'm stopping here. So for this first little while, we are not going to get to control. Stroll. That will change. Wait. Be careful. Hey. So yeah, if we sneak up on someone, okay. we might instantly break their gauge. So uh, yeah. How's that? Right. We have the edge. Oh, the my own. You make the first move. Let's see what our good old melee is like. Not great. The power of two. Not done yet. <laughs> Ouch. I won't hold back. It looks like we don't have what they're weak to yet. Let's keep this up. Not bad. I feel stronger. Should be the main points. We're gonna be. I'm gonna get to ten. Decks we made short work of them. For the sake of like evasion. Ugh. Nice. Um, the other thing I want to do is go in here. <sighs> Spend a few got him. Ding, 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 ding. Look, the first one's through. Okay, this yeah, is all he's got. Get ready. Let's see what Let's fire go. does here. Plenty. unscathed triumph. So if you take no damage, you get bonus stuff. Give me big fire emblem guided vibes. Oh, sure. Yeah. We made short work of them. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. We'll be singing with this music all game long, so you just better be ready. They are earworms. <sighs> Look at that, this dude is dying and he's like, don't touch me. That's how deep his prejudice runs. <clears throat> this one's like, get out of here. Galica is better than Tinkerbell, 100%. I was talking about this uh, with a different friend of mine when I was playing the demo. So the cool thing about Gallica, you know, if you want to talk about it in terms of tropes, right? And, you know, the fairy companion is a trope. Let's face it. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with tropes. Um, 
racist even in death is crazy, right? Yeah, that's crazy. To the end. Um, so the fairy trope is often kind of like the fairy is like annoying, right? Or like kind of like a little shit that you're kind of, you know, they're like your 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 frenemy, right? But Galica so far, and I think for the extent of what I saw in the demo, was just kind of nice and helpful the whole time. Which is, I think, the idea that humans are the big bad in another world's fantasy is wild. Like, I'm the boogeyman. Exactly. And they're so crazy looking, too. So it's like, it's one of those things of, like, are they actual humans? Or did something... Or, or they just referred to as that, or did like something happen to us? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what they're what they're cooking here. You, I get we're not it gonna lie to Stroll. He said you're searching for someone. What? Was that? Barry and Shimagami Tensei. Five was very anime coded, so they had that trope you mentioned. Yeah, just kind of just pesky, right? I think is the word. Like your your pesky fairy companion. But Galica is kind of just another member of the squad in this, which I, I appreciate. This is our chance. I'll give it my word. Fairies are little shits in a lot of lore. Yeah, that's that's definitely won't hold back. Uh, most often the case, I would say. The next one will fall just as easy. Look at this thing right here, huh? Yo, yo. Oh, Let's give him a fight. This could be our chance. Yeah. Let's go! Oh, than I thought. Nice. Oh, so he even gets two chances to, to break through back. the stun? On hard mode, that's crazy. Okay. I wonder what the regicide difficulty is going to be like. I'll definitely have to run this back. I feel like this, look, this, this might be early to say, but I have a great feeling about this game overall. And I think it's going to be one of them ones. I think it's really going to be like one of my new favorite favorite games. How's that? Okay. Just to be on this side. Baby Dino Egg never stood a chance. Yeah, get that human shit Let's out go. of here, bro. We don't have time. Fill up. Burn to us. There's no way I'm stopping here. Careful. We've got company. Catch. <laughs> We have the edge. I'll give it my own. A tough one. The power of fire. The power of fire. All right. The next one will fall just as easy. Give me more experience. Looks like we're safer. Let's use some items. No, we don't have any MP restoration items. Yikes. I need to tighten up my use a little bit. We can sacrifice a little bit of HP if we don't kill on first turn. But we don't have MP items, so that's what it is. Not bad, if I say so myself. Nice. Only one left. Finish them off. Feral Hundo. Still here? Wonder why they made main character the Persona 3 main character and Stroll the Profone no yeah, right I dude I kind of saw that too honestly like, it, it is it's hard to deny right like the similarities are there this battle's out I'm first I'm gonna win this a tough one burn to up wrap this up so resistant against fire. Only one left. Still up. Off and we're clear. The power of fire. Get a lot of. Uh, the next one will fall just as easy. Magma. I think that's all of them. That okay? Nice. Here we go. Get a little bit of that back. I really 
really need to save. I'm hoping I get that chance soon, because I, I need to end the stream pretty mm. soon. I know it's not the best spot to be ending the stream. I would like to, to do this fight, honestly, but I don't know if I'll have time today. I might get back on stream later today. I'm, I'm mainly going to keep my streams to the morning for this game, but I may get back on later today just because I've been waiting for this game for a long time. And I kind of just want to play. Um. I do have, I've got, I've got some stuff I have to do today, but maybe tonight. Also like how you get more XP for not getting hit in battle. Exactly. They, they, they reward you, I think, in the right spots. I think this is uh, pretty finely tuned after years and years and years of, of great JRPGs. I... Turn-based ain't dead. Don't let anybody tell you that it is. Baldur's Gate 3 literally got game of the year. And while it is much more, it's a turn-based game. A pragmatic mechanic too. Yeah, it, it's it's quality of life in the best way. It's it's sort of it's a JRPG that's gonna let you get your grind on, but it's also not gonna waste your time either. Hey, I won't let you die up there, that's Stroll. True, but... Doming an enemy, I am probably stronger than it, so more experience will scale better. Well, you'll see, Hooch, there's there's even a thing for that. Uh, just to give you kind of a preview of mechanics to come, you know, I could do that scan to kind of get a sense of the enemies around me. It will also show you the difficulty rating, uh, kind of like a one to three thing, of how a fight or how hard that fight is perceivably going to be. Eventually, if you outscale an enemy a lot, you can actually kill them without ever entering turn-based mode. You can kill them with overworld attacks that would normally just be breaking their stun. In this case, though, you'll kill them outright, and the game just gives you the experience and everything else that you would have received. I think that's incredibly nice. If I run now, I'll never deliver the message, and the prince will die. We have no choice but to press on. Curb says, no turning back. Face the truth. That's right. I'm heading out. Here we go. This game is dope. This game is so dope. Kill enemies like that in the overworld if you had the level gap. Exactly. Yeah. Very, very similar. Very similar. Uh, I really can't enter this fight right now. Did it... But where's, like, where's my autosave? Playtime 102, no, playtime 131. What's my playtime right now? Does it show me? I don't know. Okay, if my playtime here, no, I don't think that's, I think that's too, that's far back maybe. Is it really not gonna let me see? What do you think? Hey, give me a minute. Right. I don't know. I genuinely don't know if this is my my. This, it's just what I'm gonna have to do. Cause yeah, I have to go. Ah, oh, this sucks. Okay. Ah, oh, it sucks. I'm sorry. Um. I will. I'm definitely going to stream again later today, but I, I just can't do any more right now. That sucks. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Well, in any case, uh, thanks for popping into the stream, everybody. It's good to see y'all. Uh, th this is a game that will motivate me to stream a lot more, I think. Uh, really, really like what I'm seeing so far. Really enjoy it. Uh, I hope everyone else that hops on it enjoys it too. Send Atlas some love. I think they give, gave us something pretty cool here. Um, I will see y'all probably later today if you check back in with me. So in the meantime, thanks for being here, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.